Uh, hopefully if you're, you've received an email from me talking about the Creole Corpus and you've heard about my idea of using AntConc as our primary tool for using uh, as our primary research tool for analyzing a Creole Corpus. This video is just going to give you a quick demonstration on AntConc even though I'm new to the program and have not uh, done much with it just yet it'll give you a demo of what I've been talking about in the email. So here's Venus and Serena Williams. Say hi to them just quickly and then let's go to AntConc which is a little program works just fine on PC and Mac and it's a simple little program and one of the advantages of it is it works only with text files. It can work with tagged or untagged text files so you know the various programs we use I think are all capable of spitting out text files and uh, or you can copy and paste text from the internet or other sources and create a text file. So in that way it's really easy to build up a bank of files that we can add to the corpus. So here's what the interface of AntConc looks like. As I said I'm only new to the program but it's really easy to use and even just a few basic skills with it starts to make it functional. So I'll just run through a couple of things that I've learned just fairly quickly. So I've created just a couple of text files that allows me to search AntConc. What you're looking at here is along the side is the corpus files. So you load whatever files you want to search through into AntConc and they'll appear here. And here's your area where you do all your searching and corpus anal analysis. So let's load in a file. Uh, the first one that I'll open is just a very small file that I created when I found a website where there was an online interview that a young guy from Ngukul did in Creole. So here's Ngukul Creole, it's from a written source, there's his initials and the data was created. So we can load that in and then it appears on the side here as our first corpus file. What we can do really easily is we can view the file. Oops. So you can actually have a look at what's on the file. That's it there. That's the text that I just copied and pasted off an internet page. It took me five minutes to create this text. And so that was, I mean, this is one of the advantages with NCONC. It's really straightforward if you're creating just untagged files. So easy to create data that can then be searched in NCONC. One of the basic things you can do is do a word list search. So it gives you all the all the uh, words in the text and the frequency of them. There's a total of 281 words and the total size of that text is 663 words. So there's a nice little bit of information there. And you can see you've got some variation. You've got some instances of Mela and some of Melabut. So now obviously you can tag those to report them to be the same lemma or I'll show you later on that, that you can add in a lemma list that can tell you that can tell AntConc which words to treat as the same lemma. Another function you can look at is concordances. So let's have a look at Mela. It come, brings up the 11 hits that are in the text and it gives you the concordances. And it tells you what file it's from. Obviously they're all from the same file because we're only looking through one file and if you wanted to sort them it'll sort them according to the following word so yeah you can start to do some analysis that way if you want to look at where any of these instances occur in the text you can simply click on it and it comes back to file view shows you where it occurs in full context and i won't look at collocates just yet because this file is really small so let's add another one. So this is a, that first text file I just got off the internet. The next one that I'm going to show you is one that I exported from Elan. So this is it here. It's from Wokur. It's spoken Creole. And it's from when I ran the Social Cognition Family Problems Picture Task in 2010. And that's the speaker's initials. So all I did is I opened up Elan and I exported the just the transcript of that one speaker exported that as a text file 
and then hey presto you've got another file that um, andconc can read so obviously what we've got here is a monolingual corpus but my theory is that most of us can understand Creole well enough or we at least know what we're searching for that this is going to be a useful tool even without English translation or glossing my idea is that if you do need the glossing or translation we'll have you know you can go back to somewhere where the say the EAF file is available there uh, and you can look at it that way but in terms of just searching through the corpus yes these are monolingual text files so now we've got two files there we can go back to our word list and run another overall search now we can see that the total word count is up to over 3,000 just with the two files and we've got 688 words um, you can probably start to see that there'll be uh, differences in spelling or there'll be funny things like this so this word list you can start to pick out what things need to be tagged or what do we need to edit or correct in the text file if there's any mistakes you know you can click on one of these and it'll bring up the concordance straight away so there's but and you can make sure that that's for the word but not the suffix but that sort of thing um, so again, that file, those 3,000 words, that's just really easily created from exporting from an Elan transcript. Uh, the only other file that I've prepared, and I can send these to you so you can have a play yourself, or you can have a go at exporting some files and creating your own little files. It's so easy to do. Uh, so this third one is the biggest corpus file, and it's one I got from well here it tells you here it's Barunga Creole it's from a written source and it's from the Living Archive of Aboriginal Languages uh, so last year I just said took me two hours I went through all the books that are posted on Living Archive of Aboriginal Languages that were created at Barunga School when it had the Creole bilingual program I dumped them all into one massive untagged text file and then hey presto I had a reasonable sized corpus so if we run that search again it goes from 3,000 words up to 32,000 words so like this is didn't take long at all and I've got a reasonable sized corpus that I can actually start to use as a research tool so say for instance we know that a variable between Barunga Creole and Mokur Creole is the variation between Mela and Mibala so we can run a search for Mela, and there's 45 instances across this corpus. And we can see that, well, these are from Barunga, so the first 29 are from the Barunga source, which means that remainder are from Wukur files. And so if we want to compare that to instances of Mibala, for instance, so we've got 45 for Mela, and what's that two-thirds from Barunga if we search for Mibala we've got 151 instances of Mibala and if we look at what file they're from they're all from Barunga Creole so you know for my little study of dialectal variation it's really easy to start to get a bit of data that can inform my research and now you can start to use other things like collocates so, you know, if you want to look at what word occurs most frequency with Mela, you can run that search and you can do various modifications, tell it not to look so far away from the keyword, three to the left, three to the right, or you can up the frequency so it's limiting how many things it comes back with, this sort of thing. So this is like the basics of corpus linguistics, all these tools are at your ready and very easily done and the last thing I wanted to show you is so here we have nearly 3,000 words across these three files and one thing I did start to create is a file that anticipates spelling variation so the spelling variation may be due to uh, transcription error or just because people want to uh, indicate various pronunciations in the orthography 
So you can create a lemma list which can anticipate this. So I just had a little bit, bit of a play with that and just put a f whacked a few things into a lemma list. Here's what it looks like. So say for instance one variable Modega is the lemma and I've just added in four variable spellings there. Go is another one which in Mughal Creole you'll hear is Go but Baranga Mob will probably write it Go. So we can load that in. There's a it's not an exhaustive list at all, but it's enough. Load that in and run the search again. And so now it'll list it by lemma and it'll give you the different forms that are there. So, you know, assuming we're transcribing. So this allows us to transcribe according to the whatever variety that we're working within. And we can anticipate uh, what spellings are going to crop up and start to study the variation or yeah, do a more accurate frequency count, that sort of thing. So there are just a few little tricks of the trade. It does regex as well. I'm not great at regex searches, so I won't so show you that. It handles tagged files, but I don't know much about working with tagged files, so I won't show you that. But that is a very basic introduction, and I hope you... Uh, I encourage you to have a play around yourself, maybe create uh, some of your text files of your own and load them in and start searching around, see if you come up with anything interesting. And yeah, I hope you find this useful and uh, I may be somewhat convincing you that this might be a handy tool for us to work collectively with, thereby circumventing the fact that some of us work in Clan, some of us work in Elan, some materials just from written sources and there's F4 as well. So I hope you found this informative and useful. Looking forward to hearing more about it from you.